Hi, I'm Mr. Lovo. I am the writer, creator, producer, uh, sound effects person. Uh, I think there's an actual title for that. I don't know.、Um, artist and general creator of Nexus. I do. I just. I do all the things. I think this is like a standard practice. But like I do all the things when it comes to this channel. So, um, hi. <laughs> Um, and as you might have read for the title, this is the 1K Q and A, where I'm going to be answering a bunch of questions that I got in regards to this one video I was supposed to have recorded a while ago because I got the questions a while ago and I wanted to do it like immediately, but I was like, oh, let's give them some time. Blah, blah, blah. Well, we're here now. We're here now. That's all that matters, right? So now, um. I don't think I have anything more I want to like add to this segment because it's like it's 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 just a Q and A. I don't think I have like any special information.、Um, oh, I probably should like talk about where the questions come from. Wait. <laughs> okay.、Um, okay.、Um, so the questions. Come mainly from the Discord and like the Tumblr and like the one post I did on YouTube because I'm I I can this is like new for me I don't really know how the structure of this is supposed to be set up I assume that this was how it's supposed to go well, I don't know you know we're, we're just gonna we're gonna breeze through it like I know what I'm doing right、I've、totally I've totally seen a bunch of other people do this I think I can replicate it well enough <laughs> um so. Discord had been, like the first bit of awareness because like the Discord girlies, gender neutral, get their like whole thing, get the whole deal first. They're the first to be aware of these things, mostly by design of the Discord. Uh, so so let's get into the questions. <laughs> Short answer: I feel. Fucking amazing. <laughs> Longer answer.、Um, I definitely feel good about the fact that I can hurt people's feelings and toy with their little emotions. It, it's fulfilling to me as a creator to be able to do that because I just I, I love it. I love being able to toy with your little emotions using my little characters and their silly little ideas and actions. And like, if you. If you feel things about that, I feel good because I've done my job. What more can you ask for after that?、Um, so yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs>、um, next question. Oh wait, should I be saying who? <laughs> should、I、be saying who asked these questions?、Uh, shit, shit, wait.、Um, I probably should ask. It's it's too late in the video at this point. Hmm. I should have thought this through a little bit more. Hmm. I think whoever asks probably knows what they asked, so I don't need to do this. Yeah. You know what? That's. I think there's. I also have like a lot of people who are in this for like. In the Discord, who like just don't like being out in public, so I'll just be, I'll, I'll, I'll just like throw them up there, and you'll know what you asked. I think if this is if this bothers you, I'm sorry, but like, <sighs> I hate to say it, this is how it goes apparently. <laughs> um, sorry, I guess. <laughs> okay, next question. How do how do I say this, right? I honestly wait. There are there is media that has inspired Nexus, and I got clocked for it one time where it was like Scott Pilgrim because Scott Pilgrim is like the most obvious one because I love video games. I loved how they included video game aesthetics into like the general movie, especially with their video effects. I wish to be able to do that one day if I can, and then. Listen, I just love that movie. It has like a direct inspiration. I hope people can pick up on this, right?、Um, what else? I would also think to say like, 
even though I don't watch this show, even though I've like, I don't watch these shows, I have, I haven't seen them in like so long. Well, now that I said I can't say I don't watch them, I just haven't seen them in a while. Um, Interview with a Vampire, and not the new one, the older one, and the newer one, because I, because this came out like around that time plus after. True Blood, um, the originals, Legacies. Yes, I've I've seen them. I've seen them. Many people. Oh, and the Vampire Diaries. So listen, you can mock me for being for having watched those. I won't even stop you. But the the culture was there. I hate to tell you. Um, yeah, there was those. Um, Teen Wolf. At some point, it was like a little bit of an inspiration, especially when I was like rolling out how I wanted to do wolf packs we haven't really wholly touched but I was like really into the idea and I would I basically got into it the same time most people got into it so I was at that point just at that point I thought about it and I was like you know what might as well right um anime could I, could I say which specific anime I don't know uh I have like several different anime references in like the entirety of Nexus. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> uh, Juno Steel the, from the Phenumbra podcast definitely inspired like, some of my decisions for like Khalid's storyline for Crossroads. That's what it's called, by the way, the Crossroads storyline, which is like Khalid's whole thing. Um, definitely inspired that. Um, definitely a bunch of video games. If you're looking for like answers regarding it's like ASMR channels, many people have speculated it is redacted audios. I'll give him some credit. He probably was like inspired. He's like inspired one or two or three or four decisions I've made mostly because I was like, I don't. I want to try this true, but I want to do it a little differently, or I want to take a character I had from this fandom and put it here. He's not really the main inspiration, but like it is Castle Audios. I love Castle so much. You, you if you all, I, I assume most people who watch me have seen Castle Audios, but if you haven't, you should go check it out. Just women. <laughs> Those Castles look great, VA. Um, yeah, I think that should be it for this answer. <laughs> um, next one. Um, which characters were the most fun to design? Jeez, this is like a hardball question because I love the characters, all of them. I love designing the whole thing. Um, who was the most fun to design? Actually, I have an I I have like a general idea for this, right? The most fun to design character for Nexus would have to be. Honestly, Zachary. It's probably Zachary, right? I love I love Zachary with all my heart. I love his design. He came in to me in a dream, and I was like, "No." And working with Rayleigh yeah, at the time, and we both came up with the idea of how he was gonna look, and I was like, "Yeah, no, I love this so much. So we're gonna do this, and like that's what it's gonna be." <laughs> And plus, the, his like whole inspiration was Marsh, was like Marshall Lee, and I don't know if anyone could tell. That's kind of how it came to be. <laughs> um, he was definitely the most fun, the most difficult. If I had to say, if I had to say, the most difficult probably would have been Uriah, because. Uriah went through like several different iterations of like designs and like drafts of what his personality was going to be like but mostly when it came to designs I had a hard time just like creating what I wanted and it wasn't until I settled for like a certain idea of like a shady shopkeeper who also looked classy as fuck and like you could you definitely wish that this woman was like real I mean 
that's when I settled for everything and that was like, no, I love this design actually and I can play around with it more if I need to. So yeah, and plus Uriah was like the first one too, so like designing him was fun and difficult. <laughs> I love him, but gods, I do not wish to ever repeat this process with him again. Um, I say this now, and I will probably repeat it later. <laughs> oh boy, okay. Uh, next question. Da -da 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 -da. My favorite character. To record as. <laughs> it has to be Khalid, I think, because mostly I like doing Khalid's voice. But it could also be like Joseph, because I genuinely slip into southern accents when I'm like talking normally. And my friends will attest to this because they'll be like, why are you southern? Or they'll just be like, oh, I love how you're just slipping in and out of southern. I was like, listen. This just happens. I hate to I hate to break it to everyone. It kind of just happens, um, but it's definitely between Khalid and Joseph because I love those two accents. Yeah. <laughs> so if in terms of oh god, I almost swallowed something. <laughs> I almost swallowed my own spit. <clears throat> okay. Um. Uh, so. Uh, if in terms of, like, writing, it would definitely have to be Uriah. No, actually, weirdly enough, it's, it's not a speaker. I don't, the person who I love writing for, and it's technically not even me writing that much, it's Liege. I love writing for Liege because Liege is like me getting to be a little asshole for a little bit. A little asshole who's like a little bit right. That's me writing Liege. I love writing Liege and that's because I love the power that they have and that they've grasped and that little chokehold they have on like the general fandom whenever people say they like Liege and I was like I really didn't expect anyone to like Liege this much and now I have to like make a series because I wasn't planning this. This is like a one-off thing and then just developed into its own storyline so now we're here. Um, but yeah, it's Liege who I love writing for as a listener, as a speaker. I love writing for Oscar the most because Oscar is always so nice and I get to like put in little things and references when it comes to him. So there's that. Um, <laughs> next question. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. So there are other characters which are based on gods. Um, let me tell you. Right? Because everyone makes this mistake. Everyone makes it. And I have to be quiet. And I have to, like, not say something. Because I'm like, I can't lose it on certain people over certain topics. Especially when I want to just ramble about it and be a little gremlin and be like... Uh, I mean, you're right, but you're also technically wrong because that wasn't the intention. And I can't do that. Because, like, author's intention kind of leaves at a certain point when you're, like actually having to write out this stuff and then expose people to this entire conversation but technically it is imari right and imari is based on agemo or agemo i forgot how you pronounce his name i'm not african that's why i won't be able to pronounce these things right but agemo who is a chameleon god which is the servant of the god oloru i hope i'm saying that right if not, you can just come from my head and, like, chop it off. You know, I don't even mind at that point. So, Agemo, the chameleon servant who is a messenger for the gods, he carries messages. And that was kind of, like, the inspiration for Imari being the way he is, you know, like, being a radio announcer. And I was like, I'm gonna use this for something. I still have to do something with him, and I will. We'll get there. <laughs> So that's a god that most people, I don't think, picked up on, and I never really mentioned it past that. Um, let's see. I think if I would have said something, I would have mentioned it. Uh, another character who I'm very excited to, like,
have based on gods is when I finally do get to touch on a character who is based on Sekhmet, which Vernon is based on Sekhmet. I, I do want to touch on that at some point. I'm going to be so excited. Um, mostly touching on the characters I have who are based on the Egyptian gods, and I really, really want to get into them, as well as the African religion gods. So there's that. <laughs> that I hope that answers your question. Um, next question. I mean... Let me think. The way that I create characters when I'm designing them, what I think about is in fact what I want their appearance to be and what I want their position to be as well as their inspirations. Because I, if I'm designing a side character, the side character won't get as much attention design-wise because I'm like, gods, I really don't have to like do this, but like, I just need to finish this design. And if I'm designing a more relevant character who will be staying in the narrative longer, I will be paying more attention to this because I'm like, no, they have to look good, they have to be designed well, because we need people to love them. You know, that's kind of the whole thing. Um, their plot relevance does come into play because I because that also tells me like, especially if they're gonna be in there for longer, they do need to have like a strong design going forward in the future. So yeah, that's that's kind of how I designed them, right? <laughs> um, next question. Um, to properly answer the question, because I realize I'm not really answering it, it has very much influenced a lot of it, because certain songs will influence how I want an audio to feel. Like, for example, um, Poor Man's Poison? I think that's what it's called? Hold on, I promise you I know songs. Poor Man's- alright, Poor Man's Poison. Right, I had to do a quick Google of it. Poor Man's Poison, Hell's Coming With Me. That song in particular inspired the feel for um, Joseph's first audio. <laughs> because I love the feel and I wanted like that whole vibe going into it, right? It heavily inspires how I would design a character, how I would make go about doing an audio. It inspires a lot of things because I listen to a song and I'm like, I want this audio to feel like this song or I want this audio to like give a vibe, or I just want that whenever people like think of the audio and they can play this in the back of their mind, or they can at least have a little thing that they can attach to this video so that they think about it. And they, whenever they listen to this song, they think about, oh my gosh, this was the one song that was in Nexus, you know? A little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of marketing, I think. I think that's how marketing works. You know, it's not like it's my job. I, this is this is actually my job, but like, <laughs> so it's it's heavily involved because I love marketing, right? No, I mean I love music. Jesus, I. <laughs> um. Next question. <laughs> uh, let's see. If my character- this is a long question, because I actually have to think about this. I made- I did have like this little bit of a joke about it in like the Discord where I mentioned like an actor AU and I was like going about how it, it would actually work, but I'm gonna like change my mind a little bit here because I want to have fun with this whole thing, right? So if they were actors, Jesus, Alexis and Zachary. I think Alexis would be like a Twitch streamer on the side. <laughs> and, Z and Zachary is actually like a musician and this is like his role to like get into like the acting space. I don't know how well this would be a project for him <laughs> to get into the acting space. I mean, <laughs> I, th I think he picked poorly, but you know what? He, he's kind of enjoying it. I think they both like would get along very well. Um, yeah, and on top of that, um, I know for a fact, see, <laughs> most of them would probably have, like, let's say, 
because then this also is like if these were actors what kind of actors are we talking about like are they voice actors or like the actors actors and i'm assuming it's like general tv show actors but see here's the problem with giving me these questions i will get autistic about it and ramble about like every detail and i'm gonna try and keep this short as much as i can because this video will get long if i don't um joseph probably is like a very like a very experienced actor who's probably doing nexus for the fact that he enjoys this project and like i would have gotten lucky in casting him <laughs> like he has like an established portfolio as an actor um khalid definitely a model on the side he's doing this because he like also needs to build his repertoire i i don't even think he like he would be like studying a, a poor bunch but he's also come to love Nexus. So there is that. Um, Conley definitely goes to like school on the side of this. Because, you know, I just think he would go to school. I think he like would go to school on top of this. Also, if you hear fan noises, like the actual flapping of a, of a fan, of a paper fan, that's me. It's hot while I'm doing this. I had to turn off the fan. So if you hear that, well, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> Conley goes to school on top of this. Genius, I think Genius does like has like a whole makeup brand on the side. I don't know what you will do with this information. I don't know. Uriah, I think Uriah, interestingly enough, would also be a director on top of being an actor. And I think that would be fun for him. But I also feel like he would also be very hands-on with the script and directing. And I would probably have a time with him. I think he'd be nice. But at the same time, he'd also be a little bit overbearing. I think. <laughs> Don't quote me. You can do whatever you want, really and truly, with your actor AUs. This is just me rambling nonsense. Um, I have too many characters for this. This would actually have to be its own separate videos. But, uh, who else could I mention? Mm. Oh, Oscar. Oscar definitely, probably, is, like, an influencer. Or at least, like, he's... I don't think he's an influencer. I think he's, like, a hotshot actor who's, like, freshly... Like, he's, like, a, the icon of the century. Because if he was, he would be. Don't lie to me. Don't lie. Don't tell me it's not true. You know it's true. <laughs> he's like the hotshot Hollywood loves. He's like a Hollywood idol everyone loves. And like him joining Nexus is like him just taking a break from like more serious projects. Uh, I think that's all I'm going to do for this particular question. So like, next question... <laughs> I was the most excited to create Tartarus, the Tartarus storyline, which is basically Darren, Lazarus, Jack, and Doc. I was the most excited to do that because I had been planning this storyline for the longest time, and I love Darren, and I love Lazarus, and I wanted to be able to create them and put them in Nexus's universe because I was like, I could do this storyline and I could do it so well, I just need to find a way to piece it together. And I have found this way, hence why we're doing it. So I'm really excited to actually get into doing it, and I really love the character dynamics that I'm going to be working with and toying with and like how I want their personal arcs to be going because it is reflective of a lot of things I think on in regards to morality and like anger as well as genuinely how to operate on when you're on the fringes of society and you do not have like the necessary stuff things that are there that are like the nest like the help that would be of that is said to be available but it's not there for you like it's for people who can access it, but you aren't a part of the access. You aren't a part of the group that can access it. You know. I hope that made sense. <laughs> I will be so honest. I will be so honest about it, right? Hex, the hex storyline, and in particular, hero the wraith listener was the hardest because I was struggling so much with editing 
especially in the fact that that was also the one episode that included several other VAs. Well, I say several other, but there was like two other VAs. It was PK, and it was also like、um, Escaped, and I was very nervous about doing it because I wanted to like make a good impression with Escaped, and I wanted to be like, yeah, I, I did this like really good audio. And I'm like, I'm kind of proud that he at least likes it. I'm also proud that I had PK on it because PK did a wonderful job, and like, I, re- I really like how I went about doing it. But creating the listener effects and giving like an actual action to every character on screen, on like the video, and making it at least seem succinct enough to operate was a big challenge, and I'm glad I managed to pull it off well enough. <laughs> yes and no. Like, everything was plotted out. I have the plot for like beginning, middle, and end, but also part of being like a writer, especially when you're making stuff for like YouTube and you're making things episodically, is knowing how to adjust in between things. Because you know how something should begin, you should know how something should end, but at the same time, when you're doing things episodically, People develop different feelings, and people like you also want to watch for how your audience responds to things. So you then develop pacing. You, al- you then look at your pacing. You look at which characters are getting attention. You look at which storylines are doing better, and then you like learn to shift your focus a little bit. Not exactly deviating from your plotline, but like adjusting where you need to. Because Elige. Was never supposed to get their own story. This was supposed to be one and done. I was not coming back to do this shit. But Liege did well. But people liked Liege. And I was like, well, shit, now we gotta do this. <laughs> I say this like I don't love Liege as a listener, right? <laughs>、um, I also had many different characters who were made, and I just never got to them or hadn't gotten to them yet because they were supposed to come in earlier, but then I also had other plans along the way. There were many different ideas, so it's technically a mix of both where I had essential plot points listed out, and I was like, this is how it's supposed to go, but then things happened, and I was like, let's adjust, so let's make it on the whim. So you kind of learn to do that in a balance of sorts. <laughs> okay, so for Nexus in general, it was never supposed to look like this, it was very high fantasy. Slash, it was very. It was set in a different world. It was never supposed to resemble our real world, but it was supposed to be like more high fantasy. It was supposed to be more class disparity. Disparage. I, I forgot the word. It was supposed to be more. It was supposed to be more class separation. Definitely looking more into like the idea of these fictional nations. It was bo- basically a mix of what Avatar and like. um... A bit of Marvel. Avatar, a bit of Marvel, as well as like General Brand- Brandon, Sa- Brandon Sanderson? Is that his name? God, if anyone enjoys fantasy, you're allowed to like cut my throat for that. That was a joke. If you attempt to cut my throat, I will probably have issues with you. For legal purposes, that was a joke. <laughs> But like, I. It was. Nexus was looked completely differently. I know for a fact that several characters did change. Khalid used to be like more of a ragtag, like private eye. And said he got his design how he was now. Uriah was gonna be a villain. I know a few people know about that.、Uh, he was gonna be a villain. She was, she was gonna just. She was gonna kill everyone. <laughs> It was gonna be fun. Like, imagine Lestat. Right? Imagine Lestat, sexier, and then you have like Uriah. That was what Uriah was gonna be.、Um, Oscar looked different. Astroth was definitely gonna be a lot nicer. However, I changed that and I was like, no, I wanna make him a little bit of a bitch. So there was that. <laughs>、uh, let's see. I think that was it. I think that's all I can answer for now because we wanna keep this short. Next question. A fun question. So I have a list, right? The list is one, Kari Randolph. He was a 
he was an artist. He is an artist who works on several different projects. He's also worked in Marvel. I highly suggest checking out all of his stuff. He did a um he did art for a comic called Excellence, which I really love. I really love Excellence. People should read that, right? People should. I'm recommending Excellence to you to read. <laughs> Mike Mignola, the I I hope I said that right. Jesus Christ, I'm if I butcher a bunch of names, you probably should like unsubscribe at that point. Um, Mike Mignola, who is the creator for of Hellboy, definitely he was an inspiration. Generally, comics and games in general, because Monster Prom also inspired my art style to some degree, even though it's like not as big of as a big of an entire thing. Um, stickers, general sticker designs where I was like, I want characters to be outlined like this so that you would actually want them as like bulls. And if I did them in certain poses, then you'd want them as stickers, right? Um, old 2000s cartoons because I really love 2000s cartoons. I grew up on them. <laughs> uh, there's also another one. There's also another person. Let me quickly Google their name. Um, he was an artist for Doctor Strange. Um, Doctor Strange artist. Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange comic artist. God, I forgot his name. Um, okay. I, it'll probably appear on screen at some point in case I did forget, but he did the entire empirical run and I was inspired by his art and the way that he played around with color, because, especially outside of general things. Um, Studio Trigger art definitely was an inspiration because I really love the colors and how they balance everything out. BNA was an inspiration because I love BNA. No one will pro no one probably shares this enthusiasm for the way that Studio Trigger does it. Except for most other anime fans, because most other anime fans, I like, can see it. Um, but they don't really share it. <laughs> no one has the exact excitement I have about it. <laughs> and that's not even me being like, I'm the most special boy. No, I will go on on a ramble if you'd let me. Um, so yeah, generally comics, games, art. Um, I know classical artists have like inspired me at some point. Everyone yaps their ass off about J.C. Landecker, but I'm like, J.C. Landecker at least taught me to at least be a little bit more considerate of how shapes work in, like, my compositions, as well as, like, um, art deco, art deco, art deco, is that the name style? Right, art deco illustrations, art nouveau, Jesus Christ, I forgot my art eras, art nouveau, St styled il illustrations made me be a little bit more considerate of how I use warmer colors and how I balance those out. I also got an Art Nouveau piece once and an Art Nouveau like commission once and it was really fun for me. So yeah, stuff like that inspired me. Um, okay, next question. <laughs> I know this is like a bit of a hard topic for some people because like I know some people have like they get a little bit thingy like a little bit pressed not upset I don't want to say upset because then that assumes emotions I'm going to say a little bit pressed on like when creators have designs for characters right I know this most because either what I've seen people complain about with GBA in particular because of the name, because of like he names them, he has like these ideas, or like other or other people, uh, yada yada yada, right? However, yes and no to that question. I do have like stories, and I there are certain listeners I have designs and stories for, and I'd be like, yeah, this is how I picture it, but I also just like don't tell anyone about it. And there's just other times where I have a blank thought. And I'm like, this is what this listener is. I just have a few traits and I don't even think about it past that. Because, like, I don't need to think about it past that. Like, that's all they are to me. Like, a few blank traits and then motivations. That's it. I don't really do anything else more of them. The people who I do have, like, internal, like, characters for, that would be, like, Hotshot. That would be Cher, Sherlock. 
not genius. I don't really have thoughts. I have like little things for genius where it's like genius would do this, but also that's how I would write, but they're just blank character traits at that point. I don't have anything for liege. Um, Rascal, I have thoughts on Rascal because no one plays with Rascal in this in the way I would like them to. And I'm not going to tell anyone how this works because I want you to have the creativity. So like, I have ideas on how these listeners look and how they act. I'm just not going to tell anyone about them because I want you to have this level of creativity you can. And just play with them, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. Um, next question. Okay. Um, so, the inspiration came from the fact that this might sound a little vindictive, it might also sound a little bit bitchy, but sometimes I listen to certain stories or I listen to things and I'm like, I could do this better. That's some. Th that's sometimes that's the case. It's sometimes me hearing something and going like, I could do this better if if I had my hands on this character. I can completely play with this archetype a little differently. And because I'm picky and I ramble and I have like go into these little imaginative little tailspins, I think about it. And I'm like, you know, the author did this, but like, what if I took this archetype and did something else with it, right? Sometimes that is what inspires my choices for like doing a character. Or sometimes I think about a character trope and I'm like, oh god, this would be so fun to do. And I end up doing it because that's kind of how Seaweed Brains, Percy, and Amon came to be. Because I was like, I want to do this kind of story because no one, I don't think anyone has like done a story like this yet. And I want to make it fun and I want to center it on these certain themes and conversations. And I want people to like pick up on the little nuances of social or like class disparity. That was the word I was looking for, disparity, right? social and class disparity and like i want them to see how these themes like racism and all that play into all of this sometimes it's just like little thoughts and ideas that come into my mind it's either that i have a design and i want to play with this or like i have an idea and i want to do this or like this is a thought i've had and i just or i saw an archetype or a storyline and i thought i could do this a little bit better and decided to do it for myself that's not to say that who i would have taken them from didn't do them well i just didn't agree with it and people are allowed that despite what everyone thinks you're allowed to see something and think i could do a little bit better than that there is power in that i promise people you can do that and it is like completely good for you to go around doing that take from like things you like take all the things you like about something and play with it yourself and create something you love you know <laughs> Uh, next question. How did I do that? Um, it took a lot of work to get this done. I promise you, I, I wrote down a whole lot of things and I thought about it a lot because I wanted to create a sort of an ecosystem with these different things. Like, in a perfect world, this would how it this would be how it operates right that's what i thought in my head in a perfect world this is how everyone would coexist together and then i completely took that and i was like however we don't live in a perfect world and everyone takes advantage of everyone else so this is what happens this is how everyone treats each other and with magic i kind of did take like inspiration from things that i would have learned as well as like uh, you're gonna hear me bring up this name a lot brandon sanderson brandon sanderson <laughs> who was like don't go don't ever like oh, i forgot what he said it's something about don't go wider go deeper or is it either the inverse i don't remember it fully you can tell i'm such a dedicated fan of his work i'm you can so tell but essentially, it was lo looking more to expand on what you have rather than, like, expand on your magic system rather than ever just do something and add more to it. You know? I hope that makes sense. I wanted to basically take everything, look at the way the world works, and break it up a little bit. 
and divide it into elements, divide it into like how general forces of actual world works, and then add bits of my comic book knowledge and bits of like my fantasy knowledge and throw it all together and be like, I want this world to function like a playground of imagination, meaning that everyone has like a chance to see different characters, to see different things, see different folklores and all that in their own, in this whole thing. Because, like, I wanted orcs, I wanted elves, I wanted to do everything. I wanted to, like, have elementals, I wanted shifters. I didn't want to be boxed in, but I also didn't want to go too wide. So I had to, like, come up with classifications. And at that point, when I was naming them, I was like, shit, I can't, like, just, just do traditional namings. Like, technically I can, and I should, for the fact of market- marketability and remembrance. So people can, like, remember these things, to- things more succinctly. But at the same time, I was like, no, I want a fleshed out label for them. And so I looked towards mythology as well as general folklore. And I decided on these sp- these particular names. And I was like, muses, savants, demons, celestial savants, incubi. I wanted to do these mostly because... I just, I don't think, I think when you should decide a classification, there should be a reason for the classification. Where, where was I going for that? (laughs) Wait, let's, I'll pin, I'll put a pin in that. We'll probably come to that in another section, I guess. But when I was coming up with the names, I also noticed about the fact that, oh, I've basically taken a lot of words that have female connotations because the way savant is spelled and the way french works which frenchy will probably attest if you ever ask or if you ever just like pick up a book and like a french book and or google it you don't add e to the end of any french word unless you're like french noun unless you are making a connotation that this is a female noun right that is what i remember from my french classes and that if you look at savants it's like yeah it's, it has an e at the end this was mostly because i i was like i'm very interested in this concept and i want to go with that and muses are also particularly noted as female minor deities and i was like i enjoy this like little thing i really do demons generally i wanted to name them I, I wanted you to have the idea that when you heard a demon, it was close to a very powerful being. You know, <laughs> does this make sense? Are you getting anything from this? I hope you are, you know? <laughs> Otherwise, this is a long ramble that you that just wouldn't be making sense to anyone. But that is essential. That's essentially what I wanted from them. I wanted that you get a vibe from them. You hear a muse, you think of like... A, a song or like a simple inspiration which kind of fit for them I guess in some way and you hear a savant you hear this is like someone who is like incredibly gifted and I, originally the intent was that savants are just incredibly gifted in a specific aspect so- socially and then outside of that they're kind of not really worth anything else which is something that will definitely come to play later <laughs> but yeah that's kind of like a more rambly mess of what it of how i came up with them you know (laughs) i just wanted to play around next question okay i the way i pay stories is based on the old method was High point, low point, high point, low point. Meaning, I was going to throw you on a roller coaster of emotions, give you time to like breathe, and then throw you back on it. That was always the intent because it was something I noticed worked for some people. And also, that's just how it was at the time because it was, Nexus was never really planned to be like in audio roleplay format. It was going to be a story, and I was like gonna write it out in chapters and all that. And now it's not. 
But then when it got introduced to audio RP format, I had to then be a little bit more reflexive. I was watching how people respond. I was no- taking note of like, this is how audiences engage with certain storylines. This is how they do th- this. is how these storylines do better. The algorithm likes this, then that, and that. But also didn't want my whole storytelling experience to be dictated by the algorithm. Because I hate to tell a lot of people, we see your Tumblr posts, we can kind of see when you talk about things. We can see when you talk about things, and we can. And I sp- certainly saw it. And I was like, I want to try and at least do good enough to like not encourage this sort of criticism on my end. But then you kind of also learn as an audio RP creator, you kind of really can't control your pacing in some regards. Because shit happens, right? Life happens. You then have to sa- decide that some episodes are going to do this and some episodes are going to do that. So what I did is that I formatted my pacing where it's like, I have a certain amount of information I want to tell and there's a story I have to tell. And in order to tell you the story, I'm going to create one episode which has in this much information. I'm going to have another episode which is also going to have follow up on that information but it's going to take you through a different story meaning you're always going to have information that connects with each other but you're going to do it through different stories to at least engage you differently right so you have a different feel but you always but you're getting lore of the same universe at the same time and in some cases i would break away from that to give you different sections of the lore or different sections of the story it was it's always been like what is going to capture in attention and interest, but it's also going to be interesting to me. And I always pace things out in the sense of what is going to be fun for me to do is also going to be easy for my mental health and is also going to be interesting for the audience. Because I really need to keep that in mind or else I'm going to burn out quickly or my audience is going to be disengaged very quickly. And that really is what led me to like pace Nexus the way I have. Also, Nexus is an episodic format, episodic, I don't know which one of those words was right, but it's an episodic format. And that means I have to like break up information into like what is like the most interesting at this point in time and then move on to the next one in the next episode, right? I break up information to little tidbits and then I throw them around in different episodes and I'm like, you'll learn with the audios with each audio something new about this world that is my hope at the very least you'll learn something new about the characters you'll learn something new about the world you'll learn something new about like the general lore so that's it's kind of how i do it i don't know how everyone else does it because like everyone else might have like a particular schedule i'm i hate to admit it i do a lot of things on a whim and with whimsy so like there is that <laughs> oh yeah uh, okay uh, I hope that's answer satisfied. But, um, next question. Okay, so I'm looking at this question and looking at probably another question I've had, and I'm thinking this is more along the process rather than the inspiration. And I can re- very much go into, like, detail on the process. So, when I start with the process, I think of what god or folklore do I want to, like, put into this character? Then I look up like all the symbolisms, I look up things about the character, I do my research, I then look up ethnicities, I want to work with this character, do I want this character to like fall within this range, do I want this character to tell this story, and how would those ethnicities and so work within our social demographic and how we know them, and how does that play in with the mythology behind their inspiration, right? And then I look at subcultures and I think, what is the fashion subculture behind this? What does the fashion cul- subculture say about a person who participates in it? And then I also look up how I want these clothes to be designed. How do I want this character to wear these clothes? What does it say about this character, that the way they're wearing it? I always think about all these different little details because I believe fashion says something about the way you present yourself and the way you think. Also, fashion psychology, I learned this was a thing some time ago, but I'm really interested in, I'm really interested in dissecting how what someone wears says something about them, right? Like, let me give you an example. Um, let me pick a character, because I really love this. Uh, which character should I pick? Which character? Which character? 
God, I wish I had a wheel right about now. I should get a wheel. Okay. We're gonna go with, like... Let's go with Uriah. Uriah has a good design enough for me to break this apart. Actually, no. Change of mind. Because I don't want to break too much of Uriah's character without, te without having to, like, go into detail. Which, certain details you guys can't know yet. Right? Uh... Let's try Oscar. The yeah, Oscar. Oscar's design, when I first conceived of it, was very much sporty, but also relaxed. Actually, no. Wait. I have a better example. Hold on. I know I'm switching a lot of gears right now on you, right? I really do know this. However, you have to hold on for a second. Let me just talk to you, talk you through this. Because this is an interesting concept to me, and I really want you to, like, get why I love going into this. Joseph, right? Joseph is the character we'll be using to explain this whole thing. When I conceived of Joseph, the whole subculture was Western fashion, old cowboy, yada yada yada, and his divine mythological inspiration was Odin. I looked up a lot of what Odin's symbolisms were, I looked up colors associated with him, I looked up how he was archetyped, I looked up mo most of the myths around him, I did research, I watched a lot of OSP videos on top of doing this research, because I was like, it always helps to like take from different re resources, and OSP sometimes get, and so OSP does th get things right sometimes, and like, they do also admit to their own process, and their process like seemed pretty alright. I do research on these things, I looked up how certain fashions would have worked for this certain design, like how cowboys would have dressed, and then I play around with how the fashion works. I gave him a poncho, and then, well, poncho slash cape slash I don't know what you would call it, but I gave it to him, and then I looked around with styles, and I looked, and then I basically took apart these symbols and put them together. And by the way, I I didn't even realize this when I was designing Joseph, the like little symbols on his poncho with like the eye with an x over it that's what it was intended to be and then i looked up the symbol of gun gear and it kind of looks like that so like accidents happen right i kind of see this process as like putting everything i have about this character and putting it into their fashion what does this say about them joseph is dressed very mysteriously he hides a lot of his features he has this like upright demeanor you don't know everything about him he has this coy little smile and he's not showing his whole face he's mysterious but he's charming and he has charisma and his fashion says maybe he might be a bit of a darker figure he's less muted than the other characters in the story you know i think about these things and what they have to what fashion has to say about you so that's my thing on like <laughs> how i dress certain characters um, I hope that helped. Um, no. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't have much experience. I would have worked in, like, doing radio stuff beforehand. I would have done stuff for the radio. I would have been reading poetry and all that. I would have been doing radio work. I don't have YouTube experience. All of this is just me basically having, like, absorbed how I hear certain audio RPers basically roleplay. I would have heard, like, Castle. I would have heard Redacted. I would have heard Reverie. I would have listened over to, like, things like Whispering Wisteria. I would have listened to, like, oh my god, there's this one other lady. I love her videos. Um... Hold on, let me gather it for you. Because I think it is like Shining Lantern? Is it Shining Lantern? Hold on, let me grab the channel for you. FRA Audio RP. Because I love it. I think it's like a good series. I really do. I also think it plays with a lot of different things. And I was really excited. I think I dropped it, but I have to pick it up again because I really love it. But I would have listened to all these different people, and I would have basically heard how they pronounce things. It's not Whispering Mysterious, it's Will of the Wisp. Jesus. Will of the Wisp. I love Will of the Wisp. Whispering Mysterious might be a different person, right? But Will of the Wisp, 
I've heard them and I would have like taken up how these different people talk and then I would have like mimicked, mixed the round, included my own speaking cadences and all that and then I would have put it into that. You know, <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Um, I have like a whole list of audio RP recommendations I could give mostly if I can like find all the ones I would have been listening to. But back to back, it would have been like, you know, me having listened to so much and just mixing it all in and then taking notes and then adding in what I liked, adding, removing what I didn't like and basically creating my own way of speaking and all that and going about with it, you know? It's just like a whole thing. I would have just like listened to too much. It's, you know what this basically, the answer, it's basically autism. It's autism, it's autism, it's stimming, and it's me literally just picking up vocal stems and running with it. That's probably what it is. I fear that might just be what it is, you know? So yeah, if I do find that channel, I will just slightly mention it. So if you just hear like, oh, what is this? Then I'll probably just tell you, no, that's what that channel was, the channel, you know? Um, yeah, so I hope that answers the question. I do not have previous acting experience with any of this. I don't have YouTube experience. I don't think anyone would have picked me up earlier before. But I definitely had, like, encouragement to go and continue this. And I put in my own practice. I did my own research. I did all of this before I decided to start going into doing anything for Nexus because I was not about to come onto this platform and look stupid. <laughs> um, but yeah, that would be the answer for that. You know? <laughs> Hope that helped. Hope that helped. Jesus Christ. Um, I think we have another one. We have another question. Oh yes, we do have another question. Right, okay, one final question. Okay. Okay, so it's like a whole thing. I think this should work for like the last bit. Hey, notes. Sorry, this is like how they're saying it. Hey, notes. Sorry if this is long. I tried arranging it so that if you choose to answer the question, you can just pick it straight off the comment. I guess the tone indicator of these of all these is Jen. <laughs> Gratitude and compliments. Congrats on your milestone. This is the channel is slowly starting to become one of my comfort channels. So I'm glad that more and more people are starting to get with it. The art is always beautiful and colorful, and I just love how it feels to see people of color on the thumbnails of ASMR videos, especially looking as beautiful as they do in your videos. It also feels like you are not shy to explore the colorfulness that tends to come with queer identities by virtue of not conforming to cis heteronormativity. The characters are authentic and non-conforming in their expression of self, visual design, flaws, quirks. It's all just very beautiful. Thank you so much. I really love that. I hope you're having a good day for that comment. I, I Listen, I, I really love being able to play in space because I also noticed that there wasn't a lot of that going around. And I was like, be the change you want to see in the world. And that meant creating all the shit I wanted to see. And now we have Nexus, right? Okay, question. Anyway, a question that I can think up right now is in reference to the telepathic mafioso has been one you uploaded a few months ago. What sort of headspace were you in and how did you get into the mindset for that sort of script and high voice and sla script and high slash volatile energy? Oh, fun. I got an acting question. Cool. Um, I love these kind of questions. I, I hope people know this <laughs> in case I ever decide to do this again. Um, so when it comes to like acting out for the for this specific one i i think i've had arguments where it felt a lot like this not down to this specific degree but i have like little flashes of energy that i feel that this is how this character would act i know the psychology behind this character i know what the character wants and why the character is acting this way and i mix in like a little bit of my own experiences where i've been in arguments like this where i can tell that the person isn't trying to like be 
It isn't like trying to have a conversation. The person is like trying to get their point across and they want you to conform to their point. It's never actually a discussion. That's how I got into like the headspace. But like bringing out the energy, it would have been like through arguments and like experiences I have. Um, this is not to say I've been like, how I have, not to this degree. That's a very personal thing, right? I'm fine. It's all good. It would have been flavored differently because like there's different kinds of abuse if people did not know that. Um, but I've been in them. And I basically would have seen how the per- other person would have been acting and I flipped the switch. Instead of being the victim, I took on the role of the abuser in this case. And I would have acted like that. You know, I know how psychologically this person works. I know what they're thinking. I know how they're acting. And I know what drives it. For God's sake, I'm friends with a therapist in training. I I basically took all that and I just put it on myself and acted like that. I know that you're not, that Dion isn't trying to like get, isn't trying to have a discussion. He's not trying to sympathize. He's trying to get his point across. He's trying to show, he's trying to do what he thinks will please the listener, but isn't actually paying attention to the listener. I threw that out there because my character isn't trying to do anything to sympathize with you, the listener. What he's trying to do is to get you to shut up and just like go back into place that's it and i've been through shit like that and i would have just like flipped the switch where instead of being the person who has gone through that i just act as the person who dealt that shit to me you know it's it was like a thing i have like a lot of surges where i've like seen how this goes and i've had like different experiences and i would have just basically thrown that and flipped the switch and would have just done all of that myself um, I have videos planned which basically throw myself, which basically throws myself into experiences I've had, all that. I wouldn't say it's method acting, but it's definitely a psychological study and also having had experience in like these particular subjects. So <laughs> that's how. Uh, I hope based on how the video did, I can, I can see it kind of did well. So I hope that answered your question. <laughs> um, oh, last part of this, comments and background context. I guess this question can sort of be applied to all your videos, but I feel like there might be a difference between comfy sweet videos, the playful witty witty videos, and those that play with themes that many people tend to overthink about such process. Okay, this probably is going to add a little bit more context because I would like to like genuinely set out what my process is like when I do have to act. It's me already knowing what this character is and does and then stepping into their shoes like astroth i know why astroth acts the way he does i've acted like astroth before astroth is based on what i would have seen and how i would have processed that and my own experiences as a black person in academia and how i would have basically acted at that point because it's a lot and i would have just basically projected that for Nick, Nick is like, I've been Nick in several different cases. Nick is parts of my personality. I just need to do is pull from that and do that shit. Any other time, it's just me voicing or like me playing a character, pushing more of like charisma, pushing more of a certain trait, and then throwing that as like the whole thing about this character mixed in with all their little tendencies. I know like tones that this character has. I know that this is the way the character would speak, why they speak this way. It's intense study of a character, their psychological profile, their history, everything about them. Even with my script fills, I like create little head cannons and I think about them and I'm like, this is why this character acts like that. That's it. Like there is nothing more to it. I just intensely study on them. I write for them and I'm like, this is the character and this is why they act like that and i can just step into their shoes i've known people who act like this i copy them or i just copy how i've seen an archetype done but i flip it based on my writing and like my mannerisms and i would just go like for nick listen what i'm about to say none of you are allowed to come for me on this none of you are allowed to do this for oscar 
I would have seen Huxley. Yes. He's a filthy... <laughs> I'm, I'm filthy redacted trash. Okay, let's get that over with. I would have seen Huxley, and I would have been like, I can do something with this archetype, and I can twist it. And I would have basically taken some of Huxley's speaking cadences, and then I would have applied it over to Oscar, and I would have twisted it a little bit, given him more surfer bits, I would have, like, added the way that he says things. I would have hidden certain words or, like, acted a certain way because he's uncomfortable with certain topics, or he doesn't know how to address certain topics. He's new and inexperienced in some ways, and thus he feels uncomfortable about doing certain things, right? I would have done that and applied heavy knowledge to this. In, like, cases like Jack, I would have taken how Quinn acts, and then I would have flipped it a little bit because there's a little bit more context to Quinn, to how I did it than him being Quinn Dio ripoff. Lightheartedly, jokingly, I promise you, I'm, a rich, I'm an original author. <laughs> I would have taken notes from, like, how Castle would have played Rochelle. I would have taken notes from how, like, um, Reverie does Desmond when I whenever I have to... For, for an upcoming character, or like for Percy, when I was ever doing that, I would have listened to like, I would just listen over to things, listen over to like how certain people talk. Even some of these are based on like how I hear other people talk in like general when I'm on my day to day. Certain people talk a certain way and that's because they're like trying to have a conversation and they don't say everything, but they say things in certain ways which indicate personality. E there's even times where I like directly take like vocal patterns and just apply them because um, let's say Hugo. Hugo is based on All Might and that's just this and that's just his voice profile and I just played with that. That was it. <laughs> I just wrote for him and then I just like this is basically All Might, but like hotter and richer, you know? <laughs> and that kind of works how it does. I just absorb how certain people would said things and then I play around with it. And I would take from so many different sources and then we've just been like, yeah. And that's how I played them. <laughs> Depending on tone, it also varies how I will act out a certain character too. Because if I want, because like, I think a lot of people could have done the mafioso script for by Sunny Script by Sunny Scripts differently. I know that Joska did it differently. I know other VAs would have filled it differently. But I wanted to be more comedic. I wanted to include different sound effects. I wanted that you weren't taking this as seriously, but it was at least fun enough. So I did my relaxing, you know? I did like I did uh I did I did the whole thing. I did like all that. I had the accent. I made sure to learn a little bit of how you would actually say, it. hey, Italian names. Giacomo, for example. I I went and did all that and I understood it because this was my little assignment. I just study these characters and I do things with them. Right? Gods, this probably is a long ass ramble about how I act. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this. You signed up for this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's based on tone and how I want to act. Because Liege, Liege's audio all was based on what the tone of that was. And like, it wouldn't sound the same because it's not the same as like, for example, Giovanni's audios or Sundown Wilkins by the lovely G Ginger Neutral. I hope you hear this. I hope you hear this because that was a goddamn good script. I loved it. I loved being able to like slip into my little southern accent and act all mysterious and shit. <laughs> it was fun. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy getting into characters like that. <laughs> um, I think that like wraps up all I have to like say on the topic of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, how do I outro this? Um, thank you all for your support. Thank you for your constant comments. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for 1k. I honestly didn't. That's a lie. 
I did expect to get to 1k. This was like my first goal. I was like, I'm hitting 1k and then going to 5k and then I'm gonna surpass Redacted himself. That's my dream, right? I can be like a little bit of a friendly competition because it helps motivate me even though I don't know this man. I don't know anything about any other audio RP people. But I look at them and I'm going like, I'm going to be just as good as you or I'm gonna be better. And thank y'all for like giving me the space to improve upon and like be better at what I do. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the support. Thank you for constantly being reliable. Thank you for liking my art. Thank you all for giving me chances, for looking me up, for spreading my meme. I love that. Thank you for fan art that you send. I'm honestly elated every time I get fan art, especially when it's from certain people. Because I'm like, oh my god, I love your style so much. God. <laughs> um... And I just, I love it. I love being able to get in to see all that. I love fanfic that I get from people. I love being able to read it all the time. I love the headcans, the theories I get that happen in the Discord, that happen outside of it. I love the reactions. I just love engaging with fans and fan works. And it's always nice to see because it's like, I'm doing this for a reason. I'm doing this to create the kind of shit I wanted, that I would have appreciated, that I would have felt seen by. And I'm glad that some people feel seen by it and love it or just go into it and they just keep coming, right? And I love y'all, you know? I love y'all. Do some of y'all, do some of the people, most notably the people in the Discord, stress me out to no end? <laughs> jokingly, jokingly, let's put that there. Yes, you do, but I love you. <laughs> um, Free the Congo, free Sudan, free Palestine. Please, God, bring attention to them. Like, gods be with them. I hope they, everyone who is dealing with all that has the protection of every deity I can muster to think of. Because it is a horrible thing going on out there, right? I hope you guys pay attention. I hope that the eyes are always on them because they deserve to have the attention that they should. And they deserve their top, their moments where people like see them and understand their pain and like want to help. I, I want to be able to like throw awareness, hence why I'm doing this, right? Um, don't trust the cops, never trust the cops, no matter what, right? The cops are not your friends, they will, they basically work to arrest people for their job. That's their priority. Their priority, if you have not learned this yet, is to protect capital, not to protect people. They will discard your life if it means protecting capital investments. There are no good cops. There are only cops who have not gotten that memo yet. Are we understood that? Thank you. Right? Um, God, this has gotten into a long-ass outro. <laughs> um, thank you for being here for this long. Um, I hope you all have great days. I hope you all have fun. Drink water. Don't stay up too late. Make sure that you get to work on time or get to school. Take care of yourself. Remember, fiction does not equal reality. You're allowed to like things that aren't socially acceptable and it says nothing about you. You're allowed to be a person. You're allowed to have a thoughts and opinions. There are no thought crimes. There are no thought heroisms. I am quoting a bunch of Tumblr quotes. Can you tell that? <laughs> that tells you how much I've been there. Um, have fun. Be yourself. Don't be afraid to express what you like. Don't let anyone tell you what to like and not like. And in the meantime, between time, I will see you all around. Have fun out there. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>